You are now tuned in to the network, the YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs it down to a more simple language. Today's topic is non-overlapping Wi-Fi channels. This is the topic in the CCNA exam. The exam code is 200-301. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exam blueprint real quick. All right, again, this is for the CCNA exam, version 1.0. Exam code is 200-301. Make sure you're signed up for the correct exam. I'm not even sure if they're doing exams right now because of the coronavirus and everything like that. But anyways, we talked about DNA center and wireless controllers and stuff. Today, we're going to be describing wireless principles. We're going to talk about the non-overlapping Wi-Fi channels, right? So what are non-overlapping Wi-Fi channels? Well, before we talk about that, we need to take it back even further, right? Like stuff that's not even on this exam. I know y'all probably like... Why is this guy going to cover stuff that's not on the exam, but you need to know about this before you talk about Wi-Fi channels, right? You ever wonder how you get on your cell phone, just get on the internet with no wires, right? Isn't that weird? And remember I said, right, behind every wireless device is a wire, right? Well, how does this device get to the internet with no wires, right? It's done with electromagnetic radiation. You know what that is? It's like energy, electromagnetic energy that is all around us. It's all around us through free space. You can see like the sun gives off electromagnetic radiation, right? Your microwaves gives off electromagnetic radiation. Baby monitors, Bluetooth devices, they all give off this radiation. Some of it is stronger, some of it is not stronger. That's the difference between ionizing versus non-ionizing. Ionizing uh, electromagnetic waves can actually burn you and, and, and it just change the chemical, change chemical bonds and, and can burn atoms and all that stuff, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the official definition of what electromagnetic radiation is though. I know y'all like, man, I didn't come here to look at science and, and Bill Nye and all this kind of stuff. But you, like I said, you need to know about electromagnetic radiation before you talk about what Wi-Fi is, right? So in physics, electromagnetic radiation, EM radiation or EMR, refers to the waves or their quanta photons of the electromagnetic field propagating, radiating through space. So like I said, like sun rays would be considered electromagnetic radiation. X-rays could be considered electromagnetic radiation. There's all kinds of electromagnetic radiation. I'm going to show you the difference between stronger ones versus weaker ones, right? Carrying electromagnetic radiant energy. It includes radio waves. Yes, radio waves is also considered electromagnetic radiation. Microwaves, like I said before, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. You can actually see electromagnetic, like the sun rays, again, is electromagnetic radiation. Now, if you had some kind of, I don't know what kind of tool you would need to see this, but this is how electromagnetic radiation like propagates through free space, right? Or in other words, travels through free, free space. You see it going up and down, right? Those are called wavelengths, right? This right here, right? And on the other side, that's the electric field, this white part right here, right? And then, now this is the 3D representation of electromagnetic radiation, as you're seeing in, on this PowerPoint here. Now, like I said, I don't have no tools to actually show you the, uh, the uh, you know, animation and all of that. Actually, you can go on the Wikipedia page and you'll see it look just like this right here. And you'll see how it travels, right? And this gray part right here is the magnetic field, right? They go alongside each other kind of like... Um, parallel to each other but they're not really parallel as you can see it's kind of like they kind of like this i don't know how to explain that but so again that's what electromagnetic radiation is right wi-fi falls into this right here right but we're going to talk about the different types of electromagnetic radiation I'm sorry to sound like a scientist over here but we need like i said we need to talk about electromagnetic radiation before we talk about the wireless signals that come from our cell phone or our laptops electromagnetic radiation travels in like waves, right? Those are called wavelengths, right? Now, when the electromagnetic radiation travels, right, it could either travel really slow like this on the left-hand side, as you can see, or it could travel really fast, just like this. Now, if it travels really slow like this, and when it's really slow, that's on that side of the scale, it's sound, even sound that you can't really hear, subsonic sound, bass is like this. That's why when we talk about frequencies and stuff like that, we talk about how fast it travels up and down, right? So if you look right here, this is slower frequency. We talk about one second right here. It moves up once. That's one frequency in one second, right? Now, if we took a stopwatch and did it again for one second and it traveled like this, up and down, it traveled three times in this second, right? Now, let's go back to this right here. This is one cycle, right? But we don't call it cycles. We call it hertz, 
right? Because the guy that created, he was like a German physicist or something. His last name was Hertz. So that's why, and he was the one that kind of like discovered all this. Again, one cycle is one Hertz. Remember that. It's one Hertz. I'm going to give you a pop quiz. It traveled three, three, three times in this second right here. How many Hertz is that? Pause it and think about it. I'm not going to give you that much. It's, it's three Hertz, right? That's easy, right? So in one second to travel three times, that's three Hertz. Now remember that. This was one Hertz. It traveled in one second. This is two Hertz. It traveled in one second. Now look at this right here. It traveled a whole bunch of times. You wouldn't have, if you did a stopwatch, right? One second. That's my bruh stopwatch right there. It traveled that many times. You would think, man, that, that's got a lot of Hertz right there, right? Well, it traveled 18 times within that one second. That's how frequent, that's where the word frequency, frequency is the number of cycles per second, but we don't call it frequency. We call it Hertz. So again, this is 18 Hertz right here since it traveled, it cycled 18 times, right? And this is another fun fact we need to remember. The higher the frequency, the smaller the wavelength. So this right here is a large wavelength, right? So on that side of the scale, again, that's like sound subsonic sound stuff you can't even hear right as you go travel further you could start hearing it right and then keep traveling further you could start seeing it that's how fast electromagnetic rate it turns from sound to light isn't that crazy <laughs> shout out to the dudes that are the scientists and stuff that discovered this shit but it, to me it's kind of like amazing you just kind of wonder how does wi-fi travel well through electromagnetic waves that's how it's done right or electromagnetic radiation Again, this is 18 times per second. If it goes really fast, you can start seeing it, right? Visible light. And then it starts going so fast. It's like the light turns in this, like as powerful as the sun. And it goes further than that. We'll sh I'll show y'all a spectrum or a scale of what it looks like. So let's talk about the frequency terms. This is something else we need to know before we start talking about Wi-Fi. I know y'all waiting on the Wi-Fi, but we need to talk about this. We talked about what Hertz is, right? How many times it travels within a second, right? So one cycle a second is one Hertz, right? Let's go back here, right? We said this right here was 18 times a second. We don't really care about that. That's 18. That's just a random number, right? So if we did a thousand Hertz, we don't just call it a thousand Hertz. We actually call it kilohertz, right? A kilo. Y'all know what a kilo is, right? Kilo is a thousand, right? So a thousand Hertz is a kilohertz. Right. Well, then what if we start multiplying that? Right. One thousand kilohertz right here. One KHZ. That's how it's written. Right. One thousand kilohertz is one megahertz. Right. Now let's take it further than that. One thousand megahertz is a gigahertz. Now, notice I did these guys in bold. There's also we can start multiplying and keep going further, but we're not discussing all of that, because, like I said, the further you go down the electromagnetic spectrum, that's like, like I said, like x-rays and, and sunlight and stuff like we're not studying all that we today we we came for wi-fi right well where does it fall in this case so we're not worried about terahertz petahertz x all of that right that that's that's how fast sound or electromagnetic radiation can travel right but we're not worried about all this right here we worried about what this here in the bold matter of fact we ain't even worried about these first three in the bold we worried about gigahertz right so again one hertz is one cycle a second a thousand hertz is a kilohertz. A thousand kilohertz is a megahertz. A thousand megahertz is a gigahertz, right? Remember this topic right here or these terms right here. Now, let's look at the electromagnetic spectrum that I kept referring to, right? If you look at the bottom of the scale, this is subsonic sounds, like subsonic electromagnetic radiation, rather. You can't even hear it. It's so low. It's like it's lower than bass, right? Remember how you remember on the scale of bass, right? It's like it, I can, I'm not going to sing for y'all. But if you go further than, you know, further than sound right here, like once you get to a thousand right here, once you get to about 10 kilohertz, you can start hearing it or 10 hertz. Rather, you can start hearing it. This is sound right below 10, 10 hertz is subsonic. You can't even hear it. It's so low. Right. As you go further up the scale, we got one. This is one thousand hertz. Right. Which is which is uh, one thousand one kilohertz. Right. Again, this is sound. Once we're getting up here, as y'all can see, this is low frequency sounds, right? A thousand or uh, 10 kilohertz. A uh, hundred kilohertz is AM radio, right? As we start going up, one megahertz is shortwave radio, et cetera, et cetera. We start doing 1000 megahertz on is AM radio, 10 megahertz. So that's why, like, if you look on a, 
I know some of y'all not old enough to remember an FM dial or an AM dial, right? You see, start seeing gigahertz and, and megahertz and stuff like that. If you look at an AM dial, some of y'all not even old enough to remember an FM dial or an AM dial on radio. But this is the scale that you're seeing, right? But on an AM radio, you only gonna see a scale that's like right in here. Y'all not gonna be up here, right? Because once you start getting up here, you start doing electromagnetic waves from TV and FM radio, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? We start going up here. Once we get, this is what we concerned with. We're coming for Wi-Fi when it comes to Wi-Fi, a gigahertz. We we're, we're concerned about the range between one gigahertz and ten gigahertz, right? Right in between here. This is what we're gonna be studying most of, right? So between that. Once we get to like the uh, one gigahertz and 10 gigahertz range between there, we got microwave and radars. Right. But we're also got wireless. Now, if you know anything about wireless, you know that they operate on the five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz range, which is unfortunately in the same range of microwaves and radars, as you can see. So we, we for this video, we're going to put a microscope on this range right here. The one between the uh, one gigahertz and 10 gigahertz range or more, more likely more between one and six gigahertz. Right. So we're going to be studying for this video in that range right here. Once you start getting up here, 10 gigahertz, 100 gigahertz, et cetera, et cetera. It starts becoming infrared light. Right. Like for for your remote control. Right. And then visible light where you could actually start seeing it. Once you start getting up here, uh, like I said, we're not worried about that. X-rays, gamma ray. This is what you consider ionizing rays. In other words, rays that can actually burn you and, and, and change the, um, the structure of physical objects. Right. We're not concerned with that right now. Right. We only concerned with this range right here. The one between uh, one and five gigahertz which is where 2.4 gigahertz wireless and 5 gigahertz wireless. Again, we're not worried about ionizing rate. You want to study all of that? Watch Bill Nye or something like that. This is another view of the electromagnetic spectrum, just to kind of give you an overview of what your electromagnetic spectrum is. Remember what I said, the lower the frequency, right? It, it doesn't travel as fast, right? So that's, that's where radio waves, microwaves, and start, it, it travels like that, right? But once you start getting to infrared light, it starts traveling a little faster right here, right? Look at that, even even, even my mouse. Even the, the infrared light of a mouse right here is considered electromagnetic waves, right? Isn't that crazy? So we start seeing it right here. That's where, like like I said, this infrared light. So that is where it's, you know, electromagnetic travels. You start seeing it right here, right? The faster it travels, it starts doing more what? Hertz, right? So you start getting into the gigahertz range and then the uh, exahertz range and stuff like that. That's where ultraviolet waves, X rays, gamma waves, it starts traveling faster. And that's what the electromagnetic spectrum looks like. Just another give you an overview. That's why I thought this slide was pretty dope. We are going to be focusing on this range right here between one and five gigahertz, right? Because that's where wireless spectrum falls under. So we talk about the five, two gigahertz range, depending on where you are in the world, the band generally has either 11 channels. Well, you talking about, well, where do channels come from? Yes, the channels are the are the megahertz. Once you start tuning in, that's just like what a Wi-Fi radio is. It's just like a radio that you listen to on like an actual radio. Like I said, I know some of y'all might not remember it. You tune into 102 Jams and, and uh, Power 105 and stuff like that. You, through YouTube nowadays, you don't even y'all y'all don't even tune into a real radio. No, but anyways, a Wi-Fi radio is actually a radio. And so you go through different channels, and again, depending on where you're in the world, the band generally has eleven channels. the The channel ranges are twenty two megahertz wide. That's why I said channels, right? So they're numbered one through thirteen for use. We got, like I said, they're twenty two megahertz wide, right? So you can't use channels that are adjacent to each other. What do I mean by that? Channels that are they kind of like they overlap and that's what the point of this this video was right we talked about the overlapping channels right so in other words you look at this right here we got channel one right here that is 22 megahertz wide just like this channel right here 22 megahertz wide but we also got and that's channel one right we got channel two which is also 22 megahertz wide but look it overlaps with channel one if you use channels that are adjacent to each other or right next to each other or overlapping each other, you, we would get an effect called adjacent channel interference. So that's why, like, you know, when you, like I said, you know, some of y'all might not remember this, but when you change the channels of an, of an AM dial or an FM dial, you go from one station 
to another, it starts uh, starts fading away, and you start listening to another channel, uh, and then you could focus in on hearing another channel. Once you start in being going in between, there was interference. That's what adjacent channel interference is, because once you start tuning into that channel, then you can hear it because they operate on different channels. That's where the interference comes from. So here's another fun fact about the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. Many cordless phones, baby monitors in the US and Canada use a 2.4 gigahertz frequency, the same frequency at which Wi-Fi standards 802.11b, we'll talk about the standards in another video, G and N operate. So that is why it's important to know about overlapping channels. The 2.4 gigahertz spectrum falls in the same range as baby monitors and microwaves and all that other stuff, right? They, they, they cordless phones, they all operate. And that's why it's important to know about overlapping channels. So when you're, when you've got a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi radio, you need to be on specific channels or else you're going to get interference, just like when you're changing the channel of an AM or an FM dial. Interference can cause a significant decrease in speed or sometimes a total blocking of a Wi-Fi signal when conversation on a phone takes place. So again, you on a 2.4 Wi-Fi radio, it operates on the same radio as a microwave or whatever. If you're too close to a microwave that's in the 2.4 gigahertz range, you're going to get what's called co-channel interference. And I'll show you a slide of uh, you know, a visual representation of that here in a second. There's overlapping channels, right? But 2.4 gigahertz range also has non-overlapping channels. So if you look at this right here, remember we said one, here's a channel one, right? So channel two does overlap. Channel three does overlap with one. Four overlaps with one. Five overlaps with one. Once we get to six, it does not overlap. That's why it's in bold right here. So if you look at this right here, we've got some bold lines right here. That's channel one. He does not overlap with who? Channel six, right? We get to seven, he overlaps. Eight, he overlaps. Nine, he overlaps. 10, he overlaps. You get over here, there's 11. He does not overlap. That's why it's bold. Those are the non-overlapping channels of the 2.4 gigahertz range. One, six, and 11. Remember that. That's a real important fact to remember. So if you look at this right here, these are the non-overlapping ones, right? The bold right here is one, six, 11. This is a better slide to show you a visual representation of that. This is channel one right here, falls into that range. This is channel six, falls in that range, 11 and 14. But we don't really use 14 here in the United States. That's why we don't even cover this right here. To guarantee no interference in any of circumstances in a Wi-Fi protocol, it requires 16.25 to 22 megahertz of channel separation. So we've got channel separation right here. Then that's guaranteed to have no in a, uh, you know, interference right there. So in order to do that, you need to be on these channels, one, six, and or 11 as shown in above. The remaining two megahertz gap is used as a guard band to allow sufficient attenuation along the edge channels. Remember that for the five gigahertz range as well. This guard band is mainly used to accommodate older routers and modem chipsets, which are prone to full channel occupancy. So there's some radios or some Wi-Fi routers that actually goes over that range, and which can cause interference, right? And most modern Wi-Fi modems are not prone to excessive channel occupancy. So they kind of like make it a little bit smaller so that way it doesn't overlap other channels right so remember these channels right here one six and eleven north america uses one through eleven right y'all go to wikipedia shout out to wikipedia for that this is where i got this resource right here channels one through eleven is what we use japan uses one through as you can see 14 and in most of the other world uses one through 13. that's why we said we worried about over here in the United States. I'm in the United States. We worried about channels one, six, and eleven. Those are the ones that don't overlap. Now, there's also if we go back to this chart right here, you could say channel two, right here, right? You go up one channel does not overlap with who? Channel seven. There's channel seven right here. So two and seven does not overlap. But then once we want to get to if you if you want to do another channel, we do channel seven. There's channel. 12 does not overlap, but we don't use 12 over here in the United States. That's why over here we try to use 1, 6, and 11, right? So take a look at this, pause it, freeze frame it. If you need to kind of look at it, you know, if you do a Google search, you'll see the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum to show you which channels overlap, which ones don't overlap. But just remember over here in the United States, 1, 6, and 11 is the one that don't overlap. Again, this is who uses what channels. Pause it, freeze frame it if you need to, or just go to Wikipedia. 
But once we start planning our Wi-Fi, remember we want to use 1, 6, and 11. So this is proper use of the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. We have a Wi-Fi radio right here that sits in channel 1. We got one that sits right here on channel 6. We got this guy on channel 1. Notice there's 1 and 1. They don't overlap. They're not going to talk over each other because their Wi-Fi range does not overlap right here. But these guys overlap with each other, but they're on a different channel. So that's why we can use 1, 6, and 11 together. But we can't use 1, so that's why 1, when he's out here, he's not going to overlap. That was That's what you call same channel interference. We'll, we'll go over that in a second. So that's why these two channels, they're on the same channel, but they don't overlap with each other. So they're physically away from each other. Again, this is traveling through the uh, electromagnetic radiation that we discussed at the beginning of the video. That's how come there's no interference there. Once they start getting closer to each other, it's kind of like you'll start over-talking each other. I wish I could probably show y'all. You start, that's like, it's just like when you're just tuning into a radio station. You can hear it clearer, right? But once you start changing the channel, it starts getting, you start hearing two channels at the same time, right? They're talking amongst each other, blah, 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 until you tune in on one channel. That's how it starts, you know, focusing in. It's just like a radio signal. It is a radio signal. What am I talking about? So here's adjacent channel interference. We got four right here and five right here and six right here. They overlap each other. We can't we can't do that. You, it's, it'll be just like being on a radio station and you're between channels and they talking amongst each other. You can't hear exactly what's being said. Right. So four five, that's four, five and six. Right. So if we look at the chart, four is right here. That's 22 megahertz. Right. There's four right here. Five sits right beside them. That's, again, co-channel interference. So they sit in amongst it. There's six right there. The, Four, five, and six is right. Four, five, and six. They talking amongst each other. That is called adjacent channel interference. They are amongst each other. And uh, you'll get interference right in this range right here. You're not going to get interference right here. But if you're in this range right here, if you're physically like walking around with a laptop or a cell phone or whatever, trying to get some signal from an, uh, from an access point. Remember, these are access points. If you don't know what those are. Go two videos back on my, on my channel. You'll you know, know what that access point is. If you're sitting right in between here, you're going to get adjacent channel interference. So here's the channel layout for the 5 gigahertz range. Remember, we talked about 2.4 and 5 uh, gigahertz range, right? So let's go back to the electromagnetic spectrum, right? Again, this is a 5 gigahertz, so it's a little stronger when it comes to the signal, right? Right? When we're looking at the electromagnetic spectrum. But again, it still falls in the same range as microwaves, radars, and stuff like that, right? And then the 2.4 gigahertz, which sits right below it on the electromagnetic spectrum. So 5 gigahertz is a little stronger, right? But when we put a microscope on the 5 gigahertz range, it's going to look like this. This is the layout for the 5 gigahertz range, right? We got different channels right here. And as you can see here, there's much more channels available on a 5 gigahertz band, right? Now, we got channel 36, 40, 44, blah, 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 right? But then we look, we got some gaps right in here. We got some gaps right in here, right? You're wondering what, 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 how come they ain't using the whole 5 gigahertz spectrum right here, right? We'll talk about that in a little second. But as you can see here, they're 20 megahertz wide. What else can we say about it? They're separated in separate bands right here. So we just call it the 5 gigahertz band. But if you notice, there's a box right here. There's a box right here. We skip this part right here. We got a big box right here. Notice that there's different names. These are the different uh, the different standards right here. And there's another thing I want to talk about when it comes to the Wi-Fi. The reason why we operate in this range is because you don't need a, a license to operate in the 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz range. That's why they chose it. So you probably because you're probably wondering, how come they didn't just when it came up with Wi-Fi, how come they didn't just put it in the same thing as the AM radio or, or FM radio or TVs and stuff like that? Right. How come they didn't do that? Well, for one. You're going to get a lot more interference, right? You're going to get a lot more interference because of TVs, radios, FM radios, and stuff like that. And two, to operate in this range right here, you need a license. Just like a ham radio or radio stations have their own licenses, right? To operate in this range right here, you don't need a license. You just need to get a, you just need to get approved by the, uh, I believe it's the Wi-Fi standard, um, IEEE, I believe it is. Before you can come out with your own like Wi-Fi radio, you don't need a license to operate in that range, but you need a stamp of approval from like the IEEE standards, or I believe it's the uh, Wi-Fi Alliance, I believe it is called. I'm getting a little off topic here. This is the five gigahertz band right here. So we got a box right here, 
and that's that range. And we got the UNII 3 range right here, right? Notice that there are different ranges, 5.4 gigahertz, 5.24 gigahertz. Let's talk about that. So the 5 gigahertz range lies between 5.150 and 5.825, right? It actually has, but it actually has four separate bands. We just call it the 5 gigahertz range because it's it's easier to, it's easier than saying 5.150. 5.150 to the 5.250 gigahertz range or the 5.2. You see where I'm getting tongue twisted there? So we ain't talking about all of that, right? We just call it the 5 gigahertz range because it's a lot easier to talk about the 5 gigahertz bands right here, right? So again, we're skipping this part right here. Why? Because the 5.35 and 5.70 gigahertz is, is a gap for our government agencies. There's other, there's a, uh, there, right now they're in a, they're uh, in the stage of actually trying to use that range. But when it comes to Wi-Fi radios, we don't use that range. It's 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 uh, dedicated for like governmental agencies to operate in that range. So, and if you also notice, these numbers don't kind of match up, right? Five point, we say 5.150 to 5.825, right? So that matches up, right? That's the whole range for five gigahertz. But we talk about the individual bands. We got 5.150, 5.250 gigahertz range, right? We said that was the range right there, right? But we said 5.150. That first one is 5.180, right? So that's why you see this little range, this little uh, this little band right here, right? Or this little uh, gap right here. So it starts at 5.150, but the actual band doesn't actually start until 5.180, right? Why do we do that? So that way it does not overlap like the 2.4 gigahertz range. So these channels basically in a 5 gigahertz range don't overlap. So that's the beauty of a 5 gigahertz range. It does the channels do not overlap each other. There might be a little like you know look like this right here it looks like a little overlapping right here, but it, for the most part the, the layout in 5 gigahertz range do not overlap. That's the beauty of the 5 gigahertz range. So you might be wondering, well, why don't we just all use 5. Point, the 5 gigahertz range and don't even use the 2.4 gigahertz range? Well, there's a lot of advantages in the 2.4 gigahertz. That's why we still use it to this day. Like, for example, it travels further than 5 gigahertz, but there's no overlapping bands in the 5 gigahertz range. We'll talk about the differences uh, between the two, but right now we just wanted to talk about the non-overlapping channels. And that's the point and the beauty of the 5 gigahertz range. So again, 5 gigahertz range consists of non-overlapping channels. There are some small gaps. Like we said, there's that missing one that's uh, dedicated for other you know, agencies and stuff like it's reserved, basically. Now that we've mentioned that, let's go ahead and just fire up an application called N Insider or N-S-S-I-D-E-R or N-S-S-I-D-R, -er, however you want to say it. Anyways, this is an application that you can use to kind of like visualize, you know, the uh, Wi-Fi Gig of uh, the Wi-Fi range, the 2.4, and basically the one to five gigahertz range, so that way we can see and put a microscope on on how Wi-Fi radios work. So this is an application. Again, you can download this for free. I'll leave a link in the description below. This is just a kind of like a visual representation of Wi-Fi, you know, of uh, of the Wi-Fi spectrum right here. This basically is just allowing us. This is this is what you could call a spectrum analyzer. There's tons of them that are free out there. You can download them for free on your on your phone. I'll leave a link in the description of one that I have on my phone. Um, but anyways, we have basically, you know how if you go on your on your on your laptop or your computer and you can see all the uh, Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi channels that you can see in the area. Right. So we have all these right networks. Right. Or SSIDs. But we can put up basically like a microscope to see. The, the radio spectrum, the RF uh, radio spectrum to see how which ones are stronger, which ones are, are, are weaker and what channels they operate on. And that's what this application does. So we got all our network names. This is the same thing as when you, you know, get on your laptop to see what, you know, Wi-Fi's are available. Like when you're in a mall or something, you see, you know, I don't know, Sears Wi-Fi or, you know, Star, Starbucks Wi-Fi like that. Right. These are the network names or SSIDs. These are the signals we're going to talk about, our SSIs and, you know, radio signals and stuff like that. And these are the radios or channels they're operating on. Right. I'm sorry. These are the radios that they have. These are the channels that they're operating on. Right. So this is my cell phone right here. I'm operating on channel two, that cell phone right there. Right. As you can see, channel two, you're probably wondering. Why is it doing that? Well, it just randomly selects that, I believe. But anyways, these other, if you notice, these other uh, Wi-Fi networks, there's a lot of them right here, right? These guys are operating on channel one, right? 
Uh, you probably wonder, well, uh, how come they're not, uh, you know, interfering with each other, right? Well, they're probably further away from each other. That's why they are all operating on channel one, but they're probably further away from each other. So they don't have same, that's called same channel interference. I forgot to put that slide. If you're on the same channel um, and you're close to each other, that's called same channel interference. These guys right here, know it's a little darker. They're all on channel six. See, but they don't interfere with these guys right here. I'm on channel four. So, I mean, channel two, so I'm not going to interfere with channel one because I'm a little further away from those guys, right? Now, if we go right here, we have these guys on channel six, and we have these guys on channel 11. That's how come they're up, and most likely the, the people that, you know, gave everybody their their um, their modems and their Wi-Fi st um, channels, they come out the box either channel one or channel six or channel 11, so that way it's not that, you know, it's kind of like, Hands free when it comes to set it up right here, right? We also have some uh, stuff on security. We'll do stuff on security on section 5.9, describe wireless uh, security protocols. And then there's the different modes. We'll probably discover, uh, just talk about that once we talk about the standards. These are the max rate. Um, that's not really important right now. Again, these are the non overlapping channels right here. That's basically the the main point you want to remember, channel 1, 6, and 11. And there's also other channels that do not oper uh, overlap each other in the 2.4 gigahertz range. Another thing you want to remember is that channel, the 5 gigahertz range, have non-overlapping channels. Remember, there's a whole bunch of, I believe it's like 23 or 25 non-overlapping channels in 5 gigahertz range. Again, we, so we go to the channel tab right here. We'll see we've got Wi-Fi utilization on channel 1. We've got 9% of the radios in the area using that channel. We got... 15% of the Wi-Fi utilization being used on channel six. We've got these guys on channel 11. That's how come, because like I said, most of these Wi-Fi radios out the box them, uh, on either of those channels. And we've got these other ones. These are probably people that kind of like tweak their radios and stuff like that. So that we're using a different channel and stuff. And these are the network names and stuff like that. And these are their, I believe their RSSIs. And that's pretty much it. That's all we want to discover or talk about when we talk about non-overlapping channels. That's all I got for y'all today. If you like this video, please go ahead and smash that like button. Please leave a comment below. That's my YouTube page. That's my Twitter handle. In other words, please comment, like, subscribe to the network.